Juan, welcome to the podium. Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you, thank you. And happy Friday for everyone. Um, it's a privilege to be here. Very grateful for the opportunity. You know, as an engineer, I have a, a lot of respect for, for the work um, that field services organizations do. And uh, there's a lot of leaders here that are, are, are working on, on essential jobs for the country in, in such a such a difficult time that we're living. Um, we still got people in lockdown. Sorry to hear, Alan, that that, that you're getting the uh, you, you you're getting the, the the SMSs from from your friends uh, elsewhere outside of Victoria. Um, but yeah, it, it, it is a difficult time for for everyone. So I'm I'm very very glad that we were able to find a way to continue the interaction in this format. So let me let me start with. Um, the story of, of um, Ying Lung Li, the Managing Director of Security Business at Certis. We we love Certis Group because uh, I'll, I'll I'll share with you a bit more um, uh, as, as we go along. But just a bit about the Certis Group. The, the the Certis Group are a security services company. They provide services to some of the largest organizations in the region. They keep us safe in Sydney trains platforms in multiple airports, Sydney airport being uh, one of them. And the gentleman on the photo is uh, Yin Lung Li, as you can see, is the managing director of the security business division. We've been working with these guys for the last four years, and we're able to build a whole suite of digital products that are um, internal facing and customer facing. It's called BOSS, uh, Business Operations Support System. And it provides customers with full visibility of operations in real time. So they went bullish with this technology and started going more aggressive to market to, to and pitch into um, you know other airports, for example. And back in February 19, there was this airport um, that shortlisted 30s for doing the security there. But there was a problem. The airport was demanding Certis to also provide a solution to their ETD process. So what is ETD? ETD is explosive trace detection. So anybody who's clear bags at any airport has been through the ordeal. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, ma'am. Can I swap you? And then they pull this one and they swap your shoes, your, your, your coat, your laptop, and then they put it in a machine and then check and analyze if there's traces of explosives. The problem with the solution this airport had was it, it was mostly based on, on manual, um, a manual process, and it didn't integrate with the airport traffic control system. And then the problem with, with that is you have to have a strict SLA of, um, say, uh, one third uh, to half of, of the people that are going through um, luggage clearance have to be um, tested scan. So what happened? The airport was putting this ETD system as a condition to execute the contract. They only had five weeks to respond, only five weeks to, to deliver a solution. So we get the call from from this chat, Ying Lung, telling us, look, I, I look for a software package that can do this. There's nothing in the market that, that you know hits the mark. Um, can you guys help us? Can you guys out systems on Phoenix? help us. And I'll stop there for a moment. We, we we get this call quite often, and particularly with COVID, we, we've been getting this call quite often. We get a call when a customer needs a solution fast and they can't find it. They can't find anything in the market that can reasonably meet the requirements. And COVID's only accelerated this because there's constantly new use cases. There's always new um, uh, challenges um, that, that are brought about, and you need technology that is able to adapt, that, that can, can adapt to a constant and never-ending change. So today I will talk about this tension that we have between some of the amazing technology that we're seeing in the market, what I call the dream, and the reality, which is um, where most field service organizations Leave and certainly where we started the journey with 30s. 
So I'll share with you, hopefully you'll see today a, a better way to fill this gap. So what is the dream? The, the dream is going from, um, you know, from a customer experience point of view, going from having to wait for half a day for the technician to arrive whenever they think, you know, when, whenever they can, um, to, a, um, to, to having a two hour window like Amazon Prime and going from just using phones and, and call centers to having a seamless omnichannel experience where I can start on my phone, I can continue on the laptop, I can pick up the phone and call somebody and all the context of my transaction is being kept. Um, and then there's this movement to what's called um, from CRM to CMR. So CRM, customer relationship management. So in a customer relationship management um, scenario, you are in control as, as the company, you're in control of that relationship. The CMR is customer managed relationship. So as we, we've heard in the conference a number of times, customers are asking for self-service capability. They're happy to um, configure how they want to be served. They even happy to self-diagnose remotely where possible. Um, and they want to have greater visibility of their entire service life cycle. Now on the technician side, uh, we, We've, we've all seen the, the incredible um, technological progress that brings about the ability to have offline anywhere you go, um, capture signatures, taking photos, streaming videos, scanning barcodes, um, tag, um, scanning NFC tags, face recognition, interacting with IoT sensors, you name it. It's, it's really also about having a good understanding of uh, where technician is and, and, and having the support that they need to complete their job. So understanding where they are in the work order, uh, geolocation in, in the case of the security guards uh, company. And the last piece is what I call the COVID survival kit, which is to for you to be able to extend your web user interfaces and your mobile capability to cater for new use cases. So. An example, what's an example of that is uh, one of our customers own shopping malls and they needed to change uh, immediately the way they did um, for the lockdown, they did the shutdowns, they needed a COVID checklist for shutdowns. Um, An age care um, uh, provider needed a, a visitor management solution. It was quite strict uh, in lockdown. and and. We, we all want to move in this direction, uh, but we are all different stages of the journey. We, we're not everyone has figured out AI, machine learning, and, and digital twins. So, um, as William Gibson said, the, the future is here. It's just not evenly distributed. So let, let's try to see why that's happening. For a lot of organizations, this is more like it. That's that's the current reality. They are they are um, you know they're not living the dream. <laughs> the reality is more or less like this. There's there's they have to jump from screen to screen to get the job done. Uh, Our systems commissioned a um, research to the company VDC, and they found that field service organizations, on average, uh, technicians need to have uh, switch between three to four applications to get the job done. I know this firsthand because for uh, the organization I own shopping malls, uh, if, uh, we had this uh, scenario of the broken escalator and you had to go through seven different systems to get it done from um, managing the incident to a quote, to raising a PO, to gain the um, onboarding of, of the um, contractor on site to the work order, again, the, ins the inspection to make sure that it's back on, and then all the reconciliation for the invoicing. That, that is the world they live in. There's no omni-channel in, in some of, of the organizations we deal with. We just have the lady there. We've all been there waiting for 45 minutes to, for an agent to pick up the, the phone. There's no mobile experience, no no web. And the last one, we we, we all know it, it's, it's this pesky manual um, 
paper sandwich that, that and, and it's not necessarily just physical paper it could be pdf forms that really slows things down you know and and, and you have to deal with emails calls and and spreadsheets uh i i my favorite example is that a, a company that had six months of work piled up paperwork piled up waiting for data entry now this is a serious problem because apart from the admin burden and potential data loss you can uh, i know situations where there's been compliance issues because some of this information is, is um forfeited or, or tampered so what why is this happening Let's let's have a look at open the bonnet into the systems, and let, there's two things that I, I want to mention um, as we go into a, a look at the overall systems that run in your organization. The first one is it's very hard. Uh, you know, we, we're all good at something. Like all, all the presenters in the conference yesterday and today, their software is really good at something. Either enterprise asset management or work order management or um, smart uh, scheduling, dispatching. But what um, Gartner Research found is that um, vendors significant strength in one or two areas may be strong on others. And that's why it's so hard in field services to find one that does everything you, you need. And the second problem is that mobile is not just part of a, a, a system. Mobile is a whole um, platform. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Let's say you, you're in a typical um, field service organization that has bought an ERP and they use it for billing. They use it uh, for, um, let's say, finance and, and um, HR, payroll. You have a CRM that you use to store customer information and, and to log all, all the um, touch points, the interactions. And then you bought a work order management software, but it didn't have good incident management. So your safety people actually came and said, no, we need this other software for incident management. What's the problem with that? The, the, the problem with that is, that, as you can see, in this case, we have four screens. We have if you need to do stuff to touch the ERP, you have to go to the ERP screen. If you need to do something with a customer, you have to go to the user interface with a CRM. And as you keep growing, you, you're going to end up buying more and more packages, more software packages. That will, and it means more screens. It also means they also need to talk to each other. Otherwise, you end up with paper sandwich and manual um, interfaces in between the systems. So what is a better way? Um, there is a better way to, to, to deal with this. Think of it in this way. Let's say you find a package that does 80% of what you need. That's, that's pretty good. Rather than um, you know, trying to um, buy lots of packages or, or buying one and then customize it to the point that you can no longer recognize it and it's hard to operate, you can leverage what's called a low-code platform. And low-code platform, think of it as the glue in between these systems, and also puts a layer of, um, of user interface that makes life easier for, for your people in the field. What are the things that this can give you? Well, first, you have a rapid application development environment. You can build apps in days or weeks, um, and we can give examples of that. You can make changes in hours or days, sometimes minutes. You can integrate with anything. This is quite important because a low-code platform is agnostic. It's it's not like a um, you know when large ben vendors they they'll always want to what's called what Gartner calls lock you in, um, upsell you and cross sell you on the different um, the different features and different modules. Um, so it's important to have an independent platform that doesn't have any you know, um, any constraints when it comes to integration. So for example, we can integrate with SAP, with Salesforce, IFS, content management systems, business intelligence and analytics, IoT sensors. Um, and the, the third piece is this unified experience. This is super important. Uh, one UI, one. So how does it do it? It talks 
with these uh, the systems, the blue systems in the back end. So then the person the, on in the field, they, they don't need to interact with these four screens. They just interact with one. And a true mobile platform is something that you can't just have mobile app as part of a package uh, and have a lot of flexibility. There's going to be a limit to what you can do. It's, but if you if you need to go mobile and go mobile well, you need to have a mobile platform. There's the reason why Gartner has a completely separate quadrant for mobile apps. It's called MXDP, a multi-experience development platform. It's, it's, it's basically uh, the old mobile app um, magic quadrant. Now, the, the final thing that you can do with, with a platform like this, the, there's very few that can do it, and OutSystems is one of them. You can build your own tailored core system. So we have built um, CRMs. We have delivered work order management system, incident management systems for our customers in this platform. That's how powerful they get. And Gartner predicts that by 2025, Two thirds of all software development in the world will be done on platforms like these, low code platforms. So, as I said, the future is not evenly distributed, uh, it's he but it's here. It is here. So, if you're not a digital native company and you need to level the playing field for you, you know, making possible for you to go back to build your own software, this is the new way to do it. Yeah? You don't do it by Thing and, and, and hiring armies of different types of uh, developers. So let's talk a little bit about um, Certis again. I'm going to go back to their journey. And why do we love Certis? Well, Certis started again four years ago with with um, all of these challenges that I mentioned. They 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 had paper all over the place. They had two rostering systems, didn't talk to each other. They grew, they were growing by acquisition, so they had a lot of systems. And their customers were complaining that they didn't have visibility of where the security guards were and how long they how much time they spent there. So the first cab of rank for us to 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 build with them was this time and attendance mobile application. Um, that could talk to these two rostering systems in the background. So the security guards went from having PDAs, pagers, ones, handies, to just a single smartphone that does everything they need. And they love it. It also works on tablets. But the best thing is because now everything is digitalized, they could share this information with their customers. So even geolocation and the, the ability to, um, um, let me say, they, they acquired another organization uh, right after we finished time and attendance um, solution. And this organization, SMP Security, had 3,000 security guards. They did due diligence on their software, and they realized that software that we had built was stronger. So in four weeks, we were able to roll out to that organization as well. So this is the speed at which things can happen in the world of low code without systems. But this is very, very um, important. The ability to have a customer portal and to have real time visibility of where the security guards are. And also every time the shift uh, finishes, they, the customers get an automatic report of what happened and if there were any hazards. So this built tremendous trust um, and, and, and strengthen the relationship between Certis and their customers. And, and now they use this um, boss suite of, of uh, products as a way to, as a go to market. They, they as an organization that innovates. So what happened to the um, explosive face detection story? After a lot of uh, analysis uh, in, in record time and, and solution design, we figured that we could design, build, and implement an automated ETD solution that could integrate with the airport systems, and we did it in four weeks, just in time for them to win this major contract. And needless to say, um, now they're delighted to offer this solution to other airports. So. 
um, next time you clear your bags, say at uh, Sydney Airport, have a look at it. You can see it in action, their tablets next to their um, ETV machines. Okay, let, let's let's talk a little bit about out, out systems. You, you you heard a lot about low code and and out systems is our platform of choice. They are the largest independent low code platform for enterprise. They have twelve hundred customers uh, customers across sixty countries, in a strong community of three hundred thousand people, which is the largest by far in in the world of low code. They have financial backing from Goldman Sachs, and they've been consistently ranking as leaders in two Gartner Magic Quadrants, the low code one and the mobile one, as I mentioned before, MXDP. Um, and perhaps one more thing I want to mention about our systems is, apart from building, giving you results really fast, what speeds up the process even more is there, there's this concept of the OutSystems Forge, which is a library of more than 3,000 components. Think of anything from Google Maps to beacons to uh, IoT sensors to um, uh, Twilio and any anything you, you can think of that you need to connect to. Um, and, and, and having those components uh, allows us to build apps like you would build Legos. It, it, it really does speed up the process. So some customers around the world from our systems and the field services include ExxonMobil, Schneider Electric, really big customer, Prosegur. Um, actually, there's various municipalities around the world that are in, embracing the platform with, um, with Gusto. Um, a bit about us. So who are we? So Phoenix, we, we are... Um, we're a digital transformation company. We, we, we really take pride in, in our specialization, which is we only work on the OutSystems platform and we build um, anything from mission critical systems all the way to, to these mobility solutions that, that I've shared with you today. Our story is with our founder, Pedro Carrillo. Um, he, um, back in, in, um, in Europe, he was an executive of our systems and he had huge success implementing this software in medium to large organizations. And he wanted to bring this new capability to the Asia Pacific region and specifically uh, the top talent in our systems uh, for Australia and New Zealand. So now we're very proud um, to have a team that's uh, 50 plus strong. Four years later, we have more than 30 customers, including ASX listed companies, billion dollar turnover plus, and thousands of employees are, are and, and customers are using the software that we created. So we're, we're very, very um, humbled by um, the possibility to be here with you. Um, we were here um, in person in the field services event back last year. Uh, that's where I met Alex Lassanier from Code Tire, and I'm proud to uh, say that now we're doing business with Code Tire, which is uh, such an iconic um, Aussie brand. So hopefully we'll be able to share with you what we're doing together in, in the field services event from next year. So um, we're going to um, play a, a video of, uh, is it going? Can you see it? Yeah. Uh, I don't hear the audio. Is it? Do they have the audio? Put it off so I can hear you. Okay. So this is a this is a um, this is a, a bit of a demo of what our systems looks like and and what's the the type of output that it produces. So if if we could just roll it, yeah. Let us know if this is on. This is the right video. This is not the right video. Yeah. Okay, so I think I think we're having an, an issue with with the video. Mm -hmm. I will point you to uh, where you can see this video. That's from the website. From the website. So here's here's the um, our URL. Look, I want to I want to summarize by saying um, that we live in troubled times, 
we need technology that can adapt to constant change. And we've seen wonderful technology yesterday and today. But if, if you're not able to react to a, a when when something like COVID comes in and you can't react in, in you know days or weeks, you're gonna have a problem. The other thing I want to to um, uh, wrap up with is, as you can see, field services is, is uh, software is tricky because you have to talk to multiple systems in the back end, and you need to have a great experience for your technicians that really empowers them. And let's not forget, field services is also about customer experience, which is a crucial part of it. Um, so the, the last piece uh, is. It, it's very difficult to find one software package that will do everything for you. So you may want to think about either uh, having multiple best of breed solutions and then complementing that with a low code platform that also comes with a mobile platform to give you that edge. So if you want to learn more about how um, other uh, customers uh, of Phoenix and Out Systems are delivering these tools, to their people in record time, please follow the link here, um, www.phoenix-dx.com forward slash FSM. And thank you so much for having me today. Are there any questions? Thank you, Juan. Uh, there certainly is. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, um, let's share the first one. Um, why should I buy a platform and develop an application from scratch if instead of that I can buy an off-the-shelf solution and customize it using their tools? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a, a great question. <laughs> that's a great question. Absolutely. Look, we, we're not. Uh, let me let me be clear. We're not against software packages. We we could we consume software as well. I mean, it, it it's wonderful this world we're living when you you could just pull up your credit card and you buy software. And for enterprise software, of course, it's, it, it doesn't happen that way. But but uh, it is incredible. Um, the the use cases that we're talking about are not the traditional ones. We're talking about you know uh, organizations that operate in in niches. Uh, a lot of, of those organizations come to us because they just can't find anything in the market. Um, actually, Codes Hire is a good example of that. They've been looking for, for um, a solution um, for many years, actually, and they just gave up, couldn't, couldn't find something that was, was going to give them what they needed. So when they found that they, that, you know, they could do it in low code, it just renewed their confidence that, they can go back to building because building is daunting in in this day and age. You you have so many platforms. You have Android. You have iOS. You, you have React. You have uh, all these different um, integration um, IoT. So it's very difficult uh, for a non-native, you know, digital native company to build a team to do all of that with traditional coding. It's daunting. So I think my 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 answer in short is usually there will be a combination of software packages with customization, but then when you wanna when 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 you can't find something that fits, let's say um, not even fifty percent of your requirements, consider a low code platform like Code Systems. It, it it might actually give you that edge. The the last thing I want to say on this question is you can't differentiate easily with a software package. If, if you need to build your own digital presence and, and work with in customers and, and and you need to tailor that experience, it's just a bit harder to do that with, with packages than if you build it yourself. Great, thanks Juan. Uh, the next question is, how does OutSystems align with industry 4.0 trends and in particular, IoT and data analytics? Yeah, that's that's a, a great question. Um, again, integration is so important it's all the time. There's stuff, new stuff coming up. So, uh, for example, Certis, the customer that I showcased today, they integrate with RFID sensors via the smartphone for the mobile patrols. Um, we have a customer, um, a, a coal export terminal, one of the largest in the country. So their contractors use your own smartphone. So it's a build, bring your own device scenario to scan QR codes at different areas of the terminal to figure out um, 
where they're working and, and get instructions, specific instructions. Um, and then it could be things like building a kiosk where uh, you can track people and inventory movements. Um, so th there are endless combinations and, and having an open platform allows you to do that. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks, Juan. Uh, thanks for your presentation today, for answering your questions. Uh, thank you very much.